Hey, third grade. Today you are going to get one white sheet of paper. This is probably all you're going to need today. Um, you might end up using a Sharpie or a black marker, but um, I don't think you'll get that far. So today we are going to be making a self-portrait, which is a drawing of yourself, not somebody else. Um, we're going to be making a self-portrait inspired by Romero Brito. And you might remember that Romero Brito typically has a lot of patterns. He breaks his artwork up into lots of different sections, like we see here in my shirt and the background and the hair. Um, so we'll be making something inspired by him. This is going to be kind of a long project for you guys. It'll probably take us three or four classes. So don't expect to finish this today. And if you do finish it, it probably means that you're going too fast and might not have been putting in your best effort. So make sure to slow down. This project's gonna last you a while. So on the back, can you put your name? Mr. Calvert, put your class code. So three, and then whatever class you are in as well. And I'm gonna flip it over. And when we draw self-portraits, give me a second, I'm gonna raise up my camera here. There we go. When we draw self-portraits, we always start with the head. I get a lot of people that want to start with the neck or the shoulders. And when you do that, you typically end up making um, your head too small. But when I start with the head first, that means I can make sure that it's as large as I'm going to want it. So I'm going to draw a nice big oval. It should take up most of your paper. Okay, you probably want to leave a little bit of room for a neck and maybe some shoulders. But this is a pretty good size. Okay. And then what I'm hoping or want everybody to do when they're drawing a self-portrait is we're going to draw a very, very light line going right across the middle of your self-portrait or the middle of that oval. You might not even be able to see it up on the screen. But there's a line going right here. I'm going to do the same thing down the middle going vertically. So I have like this big cross in the middle of my oval. And you might be wondering, why would I do that, Mr. Calvert? Well, when I walk around and I typically see self-portraits by a lot of my students, I see something that looks like this. Oops, I didn't even do that well. There we go. They draw something that looks like this and their eyes are way up here. When you draw your self-portrait like that, your eyes are actually on your forehead, okay? If I was going to look in a mirror, your eyes are actually smack dab in the middle of your head. They're actually the same distance from um, the middle of your head to the tippy top as it is from the middle of your head to your chin. So that tells me that your eyes are actually gonna go right smack dab in this middle section. It's gonna look really goofy at first. When I draw my eyes, they are shaped like a football, or sometimes we say an almond shape. So I'm gonna do kind of like this curved line and then a curved line on the bottom that typically comes to a point. Do your best to make both of them the same size and shape, but that gets to be pretty tricky. Do your best. Okay, got my two football shapes drawn. Next, I'm gonna add something called an iris, and then the iris is the colored part of your eye. And the iris is a big circle takes up a pretty good chunk of that eye. And the iris's job is it's a muscle and it actually opens or opens and closes your pupil, which is that small black dot. And that is super duper duper important because your pupil is actually a hole in your eye. And what it does is it lets light inside of your eye and then your brain figures out what that um, information from that light so you know um, like what colors you're seeing and what shapes you're seeing. So that iris is really, really important. So is that pupil. And your pupil will actually change sizes. Um, so if you are in a really dark room where there's not a lot of light, your pupils actually get really, really big because they're trying to get as much light as they can. But when you're in a really bright room like you might be right now, your pupil will get really, really small. And that's because there's a lot of light. It's easy for your eyes to get that light. So they actually can shrink. And you can watch people's pupils grow and get smaller depending on when the lights are turned on and off. Next, I'm going to uh, mark where my nose is. So I'm going to find where the middle of my head is, which is where my eyes were, and the bottom of my chin. And I want to find the middle spot between here. So it's going to be right about here. That's going to tell me and make a mark so you know where it's at. Make sure to draw those lightly too, because we're actually going to erase them later on. 
that's going to tell me where the bottom of my nose is. And when I draw my nose, I'm going to draw like this kind of flattened out U shape. And then I'm going to put like a C or a parentheses on either side. Okay, you don't need to draw something that looks like this. Don't want to see a triangle with two black dots. Don't need to see something like this. Okay, we're working on making these self-portraits look realistic. Then I'm going to find the middle between the bottom of my nose and my chin. So that's right about here. That's the middle. And I'm going to go up just a little bit. So maybe to about here. This is going to be where the top of my mouth is. Once again, I'm making a little mark so I know where that is. I'm drawing it lightly. My mouth is going to be kind of like a D that's been tipped on its side. Okay, like that. Kind of a big capital D. You can give yourself lips if you'd want. Otherwise, you can add teeth. Make that tooth go all the way across. Make sure you look like you're smiling. We're happy that we're back in the school. You could give yourself a tongue. That's fine. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Next, I'm going to add my eyebrows. My eyebrows are obviously going to go above my eye. They're not going to touch my eye, though. Okay, and typically, your eyebrows start kind of big towards the center of your face, and then they get a little bit smaller as they get further out. If you would like to add eyelashes, you can as well. I'm not going to in this drawing. Then you're going to add the bridge of your nose. And that's that really hard thing that um, your glasses sit on. If you wear glasses or sunglasses, you can touch it. You might think it's made of some uh, bone, but it's actually made of something called cartilage, which is what your elbows and kneecaps are actually made out of. And that bridge of your nose is going to kind of start right about here. You know, it doesn't want to touch that nose. It's going to start about here and it's going to curve up into my eyebrow. Curve up into my eyebrow. It's really important to make sure that that bridge does not go into your eyebrow. I also get a lot of times people will curve it and it goes into their eye. Okay, it's going to go up past your eye to that eyebrow. Okay, and that's um, that thing that your glasses sit on. Next, we'll do our ears, and your ears are actually really, really big. Most people don't realize that. If I um, touch from the corner of my eye, do this on your actual face. You can touch from the corner of your eye and go straight over. You'll hit the top of your ear. So the top of my ear is actually going to be right here. Now go to the bottom of your ear and go straight over, and you'll find that it actually lines up with the bottom of your nose. Okay, so bottom of your nose is where the bottom of your ear goes. So that tells me your ear is actually this big. Okay, it looks really big in the drawing, but we just touched that with our fingers. That's how big that is. It's kind of like this really skinny C shape. Like that. They don't need to be too super big. Sometimes I put a little squiggle in them just to kind of look like the inside of an ear. Next, we can do our neck. Your neck is actually really, really big. I get a lot of people, they draw these really skinny necks. It looks like a pencil neck. Okay, your neck is really thick because you got a really big brain. It weighs a lot. So you need to make sure that neck looks nice and thick. And the way to do that is if you actually touch from the outside of your eye, the corner here, and you go straight down, you'll touch the edge of your neck. So that tells me my neck is actually this thick. Okay, that whole distance. Bring that neck down a bit. Okay, now we'll give ourselves some sh uh, collar. You could give yourself kind of this U-shaped collar. That's called a crew neck. Otherwise, some people wear V-necks, which come to a V. Mr. Calvert usually wears a V-neck, so I'm going to draw that. And then hopefully, if you drew your picture big enough, your shoulders will probably just go right off the edge of your paper. Okay, and your shoulders, they're almost horizontal, which means they almost go straight out. Your shoulders are really big. They have a lot of muscles to them. You have to lift a lot of things. Okay, so a lot of people want to draw them like this. Okay, I actually did that in that little drawing back here. Okay, your shoulders don't go like that. They're going to come almost straight out. Okay, like that. So I'm going to go straight out. Like this. Okay, now's probably the hardest part is the hair. Okay, and if I, when I do my hair, I'm 
I'm gonna touch the top of my ear. You can do that right now. Touch the top of your ear. Notice that there's a little bit of hair right there. Boys and girls have that. Okay, so that tells me my hair is gonna go all the way down here. Okay, it's gonna go all the way down here. And it looks real goofy. I look like I have this huge space right here. Well, that's partly gonna be filled up with hair. Okay, usually I said people like to draw their eyes up here. That's not right, because where they typically draw their eyes, that would actually get covered up by their hair. So I'm gonna draw just kind of this squiggly line, like this, for my hair. And that's for boys, typically. Now this is a boy that has pretty short hair. Notice how rounded this is on top from that oval. That makes it look like the hair is pretty short. Now if you're a boy that has a little bit longer hair, you're gonna erase that line and you're gonna make that kind of squiggly, just like that one that you did for the first part of here. So just by changing that line a little bit, it's gonna make my hair look a little bit longer. Now girls, yours is gonna be a little bit different. I drew this one real quick so you can kind of see. This is my example. Okay. For girls, a lot of times you have like a bang that kind of comes off to the side. So I'm gonna start kind of off to the side. Don't start right smack dab in the middle. Usually your part is on the side. And I'm gonna kind of curve down to my ear like this. And then this other side can curve down to my ear. And you can add some little streaks of hair in here too if you'd like. Then to make your hair look long, we're gonna erase just a little bit by the sides of your ear. And we're gonna take that line down past your ear. And depending how long your hair is, if you got short hair, you know, maybe it's only like that. Okay, make sure that line goes right into your neck. If you got long hair, you can bring it down to your shoulders. So right now it looks like that hair is behind this girl's shoulder. Or I can erase this little spot. I can go like this, and now it looks like that hair is on top of the shoulder. Sometimes girls like to wear their hair like that too. If you're a girl that has curly hair, instead of drawing that line so straight, you're just gonna add kind of a little wiggle to it, okay? Everybody's hair is a little bit different, so you might have to kind of fudge it a little bit, all right? Um, the last couple of things that we are going to do today is hopefully you get this far, um, is that we need to kind of break up our face into two sides, okay? We saw that with Romero Brito, a lot of times he would do like a pattern on one side, pattern on another. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go kind of where that bridge of my nose is and I'm gonna just kind of curve it like this. Curve line. I'm gonna do a little one right here. Curve line going the other way. And then for my chin. Okay, so these curves kind of keep going different directions. This one curves out, this one kind of curves in, this one curves back out. And that makes it so I can actually um, add details on either side. So my hope is that you get that far today. Um, if you do, that's super awesome. Um, you're rocking and rolling. If you don't, that's fine too. You're gonna have class time to work next time as well. Um, next time we'll work on sharpening everything. We'll also um, end up adding some patterns to your shirt and patterns to the background as well. Okay, so try to get this far. Remember to erase it if you make a mistake, draw lightly, um, and think about all those things that we talked about, where your eyes belong, they go in the middle. Your nose is halfway between your eyes and your chin. Think about where your mouth goes, how big your neck is, where your ears are at, okay? Use these guidelines, those really light lines I drew to help you. That's what they're there for. All right, when you're done, make sure to clean up your spot.